it's late November and some of you up north <laughs> you're getting ready to dig holes in the ice so you can go fishing well it's really getting comfortable here the water temperature is 73.5 it's 708 in the morning sunrise was less than 10 minutes ago and we're gonna go fishing this lake is called Lake Underhill and I have been here before it is what's called a Fab Five Lake in Orange County in Central Florida Orange County manages this lake and four others that's why they call it the Fab Five to be a trophy lake for largemouth bass I've caught many fish here so far no trophies but let's go see what we can do today Since it's late November, the water temperature is cooled and we're kind of in the fall. And this is an area that, or at least the time of the year, that hopefully they will be chasing bait one way or another. Moving baits are what I'm gonna try to throw. Uh, rattle trap, crank bait, uh, swim bait, all that kind of stuff. And I won't ever forget about fishing with a worm or something slow also. but. We'll have to go try and see what works. Since it's early in the morning, and hopefully they'll be chasing bait, I'm going to fish with this, it's called a Whopper Plopper. And it's kind of clear with a dark back. Uh, this is really clear water, and I'll show you that later, but let's go see, try this first. I don't know how well you can see this into the water, uh, but the hydrilla is about a foot or so down. And we're in, um, well, neither, well, the front one is showing that we're in like 12 feet of water. Uh, I'm not sure how accurate that is, but it's not flashing. So my guess is it really is seeing through that. And we're on the other fish finder is showing about 1.4 which would be how far down the hydrilla is which is kind of good I guess hopefully the fish can see this uh, whopper plopper and maybe they'll come up and hit it now there's a point where the hydrilla will stop. This is pretty shallow back here, from here all the way back. But over here, if I remember right, it's deep enough that the hydrilla isn't there. And I'm thinking that I'm close to the edge where the hydrilla is starting to break up a little. And if you haven't noticed that, there's a highway that runs right through the middle of the lake. So it can get pretty noisy here when it's, uh, Heavy, heavy traffic, big trucks. Traffic doesn't look too bad this morning. But it's a little bit deafening underneath that overpass. And we're right on the edge where the hydrilla has dropped off. moving back in a little bit just to try to find the hydrilla again. I'm in 20 feet of water. So once it gets to the edge of that shelf, it really drops off quick. My guess is the fish would sit on the edge of this shelf. 
more than out in the open. All right, here we are back to the hydrilla. All right, I want to try a different bait. So I'll swap poles out, put the uh, put the whopper plopper down the top water, and I want to go with a crankbait. All right, this is a medium diving crankbait. It's a uh, chrome. And I have a uh, fluorocarbon leader on the front tied to, uh, I think this is 30 pound braid on this. It's supposed to be quite sunny today and the sun is just over the horizon, but it's already quite sunny. Well, well, let me show you something that I bought. At times I've wanted to use a net in the boat, but I've never had a net that I thought was the right size or the right configuration for fishing in this small boat. I wound up buying this. Now let me just open it to you. It folds. It has a telescoping handle that locks. It has a clip to put on your belt once it's all folded up, but I'm not really using that. And this part pulls back, allows this part to fold down, and then it goes there. Now this is a vinyl coated mesh that's on here, so hopefully it will not get caught with fish hooks in it, crankbaits and things like that. And what's another advantage of this? All my other nets had one other disadvantage that I didn't like. They sank, and this one doesn't. This one specifically is made for conditions where you wouldn't worry about it sinking, so it floats. When we catch a fish, hopefully we will, uh, we're going to try this net. Below this video, click on Show More to see links for many of the items used in most of my videos. They are there so you can locate them in case you are interested. I'm seeing fish busting on the surface or at least bait up here a little. So I'm gonna go to my fluke and try that a little bit. You can also get a little bit more distance on this. There's a 15 pound braid. Let's see. I don't even think that that was a bass, but. Well, we got something here. I could use the net, but I don't think so. Well, let's see. Little guy. Oh, he really swallowed that. Got it out. He's, uh, <laughs> I don't know, 10 inches long. All right, let's uh, let him go. I'm pretty sure these are probably small fish here busted on the surface. But, let's try.
you saw that, but something grabbed my fluke. Swam quickly this way. I set the hook, but nothing. The way it goes. It's a little morning today. Bluebird skies, bright, sunny. If you can see this, the hydrilla is right up to the a foot or so from the top of the water. Not in a lot of room for this fluke to kind of dance through this. But if there's fish up on the top feeding, they should be able to see this. the new net. Well, that's not too bad. Got that one on the fluke. All right, let's just see. He's 16 inches. And that net worked really well. Just the right length, just the right size. Well, not too busy of a day fishing-wise today, but let me show you how I put this uh, away. Uh, turn the handle in, tighten it. This is the bottom. So you pull back on this part. You can see this pulse. Fold this over. Actually, I tuck the net in. And there it is, pretty compact. Worked really good. I'm glad I got it. You'll see more of this in the future. Well, it was a pretty slow day today. I caught a few, lost one uh, after it uh, hooked up. Never made it to the boat, but that's okay. 
that's going to release it anyway. Still better than shoveling snow. Have a nice day. Bye now. Thank you.